cell cycle control system, especially at the S phase, which is uh, part of the interface of the uh, cell cycle. And it is during the S phase that uh, there is an active uh, DNA replication. And we all know that if a cell has begun to replicate its DNA, that means the cell is committed to cell division. So let us look at what is the control that is there during the S phase of the cell cycle. So the learning outcomes of this session is that during S phase, the entire set of DNA is to be replicated. And all the preliminary preparative work for this, uh, uh, this function, that is the DNA to get replicated, is already done in the G phase. For replication to initiate, an origin of replication is a must. And that is where the replication machinery is assembled with helicase being added, but in its inactive form. Now, we all know why helicase is needed or what is helicase. DNA helicase is an enzyme that unwinds the double strand to form single strands. This is a complex that is ready to begin initiation. When the cell crosses the G1 to S checkpoint, this is a transition phase and this is also uh, what is called as a start point and it is a commitment stage uh, the SCDK that is the S cyclin CDK and another kinase called the DB4 dependent kinase ensure that initiation begins. So these are the kinases that are regulating the S phase and uh, these are the kinases that also ensure that replication initiates only once in a cell cycle. Okay. So this, this is an important control that is needed during the cell cycle, during the S phase. In the S phase, it is also ensured that the DNA repair system functions to take care of errors that have happened during replication. So uh, when you look at the cell cycle control in the S phase, there are two challenges in the S phase. What are the two challenges? So one is that the DNA replication has to be highly accurate uh, because the copies of DNA that have to be formed have to be identical. One cannot have the daughter uh, cells having DNA that is uh, mutated or DNA that is uh, not uh, identical to the parent. So therefore, the replication process itself has to be done with great accuracy. And in fact, the DNA polymerase, which is the main polymerizing enzyme, takes care of the fact that DNA uh, replication is accurate. And yet there are possibilities of errors. So if the process has been erroneous, then this, that should also be repaired. So during the S phase, the, D, the DNA repair systems uh, of the cell are active and they begin to uh, carry out uh, repair of those um, mistakes that have been made during replication. The second challenge that is there for the S phase is that every, uh, every DNA of the entire genome should be copied only once in a cycle, which means that, for example, in human cells, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which means we have 23 pairs of DNA, which means a total of 46 DNA. So every 46 DNA should have a copy of its own. So you should have in total after the S phase 92 DNA. And they are supposed to be homologous copies. They are supposed to be identical. So this is another challenge that in one cycle, you should have only a single uh, a copy. So therefore replication should be initiated for that DNA only once. And therefore, and if, if suppose that is not happening, if suppose you have re-replication of the same DNA happening in the same cycle, then you would have what is called as ploidy, polyploidy, and uh, etc. So therefore, uh, ploidy levels, if there are more than one uh, chromo, if there are more than two sets, if there are more than two chromosomes, then you know that uh, it leads to what is called as chromosomal aberrations. It leads to several different diseases. So that cannot be afforded. So say, for example, this is uh, a part of a DNA, okay, or it is a DNA itself. And uh, if you have to consider that this is to be replicated, then we know that 
both the strands of the DNA are going to be templates. And as templates, you would have on the template a new DNA being formed. So therefore, you get two copies, two identical copies. So this entire thing from one to get two identical copies, this is replication only once. And this is what we are trying to say. That is, every DNA of the entire genome should be copied only once in a cycle. So you have one and two. So there are two. That's it. It cannot be more than that. So therefore, this has to be controlled. If it is not controlled, as mentioned, it will lead to polyploidy. So therefore, how is it controlled or how is it regulated is what something that we are going to understand uh, uh, as we move ahead. Now, um, say for example, this you have this long DNA and this long DNA has to be replicated. So we, as mentioned, we know that for replication to begin, the DNA has to unwind somewhere. Okay. So the unwinding of the DNA happens at specific regions that are called as origins of replication. So they are specific sequences that are present in the DNA itself. And it is in these sequences that you can have unwinding happen. Now also therefore, uh, there has to be a machinery that would uh, enable the unwinding of the DNA at this regions. So the machinery or the replication machinery has to recognize these origins, come and bind to these uh, origins and then uh, from these origins unwinding has to begin. Now let us take in point only this one origin and then you should imagine that more or less the same is happening in all the other origins. So say for example this is uh, the origin of replication. To this origin of replication comes and binds two complexes. One is the origin replication complex. This is made up of six subunits. So this yellow part is made up of six subunits. And it is attached to another molecule that is called as CDC6. So that is the um, um, first uh, set of molecules that comes and binds to the origin of replication. So in fact, the ORC can recognize the origin and come, can come and bind to the origins of replication. Now, the next complex that comes and binds is CDT1. So, this is CDT1 and this is the inactive helicase. In fact, this is a dimer. So, there are two helicases present over here. The CDT1 actually acts as the helicase loader. So, first of all, CDT1, when it is active, it has a high affinity to bind to the inactive helicase. Uh, now, uh, 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 once it binds to the inactive helicase, the CDT1 is able to bind to CDC6. So therefore, as it comes and binds to CDC6, obviously the helicase that is already bound to the CDT1 will be positioned at the origin. So now what you have is uh, that um, you have a complex that is formed that is called as pre-replication complex. So this happens when? This happens in the G1 phase itself and in the early G1 phase all the CDT1 is kept active. Why is it kept active? Because only and only then it is going to load the inactive helicase onto these origins. So you may say that most origins are marked by this pre-replication complex. So most of the origins will have assembled on it the pre-replication complex. And like mentioned, it begins, this, this ear marking of the origins actually begins uh, in the late mitosis and early G1 phase itself. Now, when the inactive helicase becomes active, only then replication is initiated. Until you have the CTT1 bound to the origin with the inactive helicase, it is ready for initiation, but it is not going to begin initiation. Okay, there there is a difference. It is it is all all present ready uh, with the complex over there, but then it is not active. It is only present over there. The moment it gets a cue, the moment it gets a signal, it will start replicating. So therefore, the the uh, the catch is that if the helicase becomes active, then you would immediately have replication being initiated. But when does it happen? This happens only in the S phase. 
So therefore, there has to be something that is controlling. What we need to know is what happens in the S phase that the helicase becomes active. Okay, and also we have to keep in mind that uh, there has to be a control over the fact that replication initiates only once. So when one goes into S phase, okay, we all know that when cell enters the S phase. So when does the cell enter S phase? When G1S cyclin CDK is, is uh, at the checkpoint allowing the cell to enter S phase. Now as it enters the S phase, uh, S cyclin CDK is going to increase and also what is going to increase is another kinase that is called as DDB4 dependent kinase. So DDK, we will call it in short DDK. Now what the S CDK and the C DDK do is that the pre-replication complex that is already earmarking the origin, okay, the S CDK and the DDK are actually going to phosphorylate the uh, CDC6 and the uh, CDT1. So we see that you have a phosphate moiety being added because we know that CDKs are kinases, cyclin dependent kinases, DDKs are also kinases, so they can add phosphorus to the substrates. So CDC6 and CDT1 are the substrates, just two of the substrates. There are many such substrates, but here, since we are concerned only with the origin of replication, we are looking at only these two substrates. So therefore, you can see how CDC6 and CDT1 both get phosphorylated. Interestingly, in this phosphorylated form, CDT1 has no longer any affinity to bind to the helicase. So therefore, what happens is that you have basically the CDT1 on getting phosphorylated, uh, it leaves the complex, okay? So this phosphorylated CDT1 that is there, it cannot any longer bind to any inactive helicase. So what we are trying to basically uh, put across is that when CDT1 is phosphorylated, it loses affinity to bind to helicase, inactive helicase itself. Okay. So when once it is phosphorylated and you have SCDK active, all CDT1 are going to get phosphorylated. So therefore, none of the CTT1 can any longer bind to any helicase, correct? And since it cannot bind to any helicase, it will not load any longer any helicase on any of the origins in the DNA. So that is regulation. So what is happening is an active CTT1 is made to become inactive by getting it phosphorylated. And who does that? It is the SCDK and the DDK that do that. So therefore, by doing this and ensuring that you don't have the helicase getting loaded again, you are ensuring that replication happens only once. If you have helicases present that can be loaded again, then you have the question of re-replication happening. But if you cannot have the helicase being loaded, and why cannot the helicase be loaded? Because the CDT1 is no longer able to load the helicase. Okay, so with that, therefore, what happens is that also these two are going to phosphorylate the helicase. And on phosphorylating the helicase, the dimer that is there, each of this uh, separates into the monomer. One moves in one direction and the other moves in the other direction. So this is going to open the DNA in this direction and this is going to open the DNA in this direction. So therefore, you can see how you already have a DNA open. and this open DNA, so this is one template, this is the other template to which you will have DNA polymerase coming and binding and synthesizing the new DNA. You can see how the new DNA is being synthesized. So here, please take into consideration that once you have the helicase moving, this region was the origin, right? Now this origin is open for another helicase to come and bind. But then a helicase will not come and bind. Why? Because CDT1 has been phosphorylated. Please to understand that phosphorylated CDT1 is only one way of taking control of CDT1. What has also been observed is that uh, CDT1 level transcription uh, is decreasing and also another molecule called geminin 
is activated. So, geminin is an inhibitor of CDT1. So, geminin uh, will also bind to CDT1 and it can never then bind to a helicase again. And so, the helicase will not be loaded even if there is an origin available to bind to. So, therefore, two things have happened. One, the helicase has become active because it has been phosphorylated by SCDK and DDK. And the second thing that has happened is that the CDT1 has been made inactive because of which you cannot have reloading of the helicase happening and therefore you cannot have another initiation of replication in that cycle. So you must understand that CDT1 is going to be inactive until the mitosis, right? So therefore you cannot have helicase getting loaded again only during the late mitosis and the early G1 phase when SCDK is inactivated, you would again find that you can have the origins being earmarked. So this is how control is happening. What also happens in the S phase is that as the DNA replication progresses and if during the replication there is any uh, mistake occurring, then the DNA repair is initiated. So this is in initiated and both SCDK and DDKs help in ensuring that the DNA repair mechanism is functioning. Then what also happens is that DNA condensation is initiated in S phase. And uh, during the S phase, a lot of histones are being synthesized. So we know that H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 form nucleosomes. And around every nucleosome, the DNA is wrapping. So you know that the chromatin is formed because of the nucleosome DNA interaction. So this also happens in the S phase. What also happens is that at the end of S phase, the sister chromatids. So what is sister chromatid? Once you have the copy formed, right? So then they are homologous pair. So then they are called as sister chromatids. So they are held together by proteins called cohesins. Now cohesins are made up of certain proteins that are called as structure maintenance of chromosome molecules. So these come together to form a complex and this complex can bind to two sister chromatids. So you can see that they have already formed chromatin because the condensation has already been initiated. So these sister chromatids are held together by the cohesins and the entire stretch of the sister chromatids is held together by several cohesins. So thereby what happens is the two sister chromatids now from the S phase onwards are always going to be together. They are always going to remain together. So therefore, this sets the tone of mitosis as pairing of identical chromosomes helps in its separation. So let us make the conclusions. The pre-replication complex is assembled on the origins in the G1 phase but gets converted to initiation complex when in the S phase. So the pre-replication complex has an inactive helicase which needs to get active to unwind at the origins of replication. And this is regulated by phosphorylation by two regulatory kinases, SCDK and DDK. Thus, the regulatory kinases by phosphorylating CDT1 and CDT, CDC6 ensure that replication initiation occurs only once in a cell cycle in eukaryotes. So the important activities in S phase are DNA repair, DNA condensation and identical chromosome pairing before onset of M phase. The S phase is a reflection of how the cell cycle commits to cell division by ensuring that the entire genome is accurately duplicated and geared to have appropriate gene expression and preparedness for the mitosis. Thank you.